In today's session, we're going to be doing a complete demo of the Skillsbase platform. We'll go through how to get set up, how to do assessments, and then we'll look at some of the fantastic reports and insights that Skillsbase can deliver your organization. To get things started, I thought I'd walk through a couple of the reports that Skillsbase has just to give you an idea of the types of insights that the system can provide your organization. So let's start with the heat matrix. Now the heat matrix is a fantastic visual report that allows you to look at an entire group of staff members all at once. So I'm gonna look at my engineers today. And so once I'm happy with the configurations that I've set here, I'll click run report. And there we go. So now I'm looking at my engineers. You can see them listed there up top and the skills they've been assigned are here on the left-hand side. Now per the legend down below, skills they're ranked highly are in green and skills they're ranked poorly are in red. If I take a step back here, I'm seeing a fair bit of green. And so that means that overall my engineers are doing pretty well. But if I zoom in, I can see that a lot of engineers are struggling with this particular skill. And that this staff member in particular, Evan, is struggling a lot with the skills they've been assigned. So very quickly, I've come to learn both how my engineers are doing as a group, as well as where specifically they could be provided some targeted assistance. Okay, so that was the heat matrix. Now let's have a look at another popular report in Skillsbase, the People Finder. Now the People Finder is a fantastic tool for helping you find the right person for a job, as well as helping you uncover hidden talents in your organization. So let's say that you need to find someone who's got a particular skill set. We'll say it's this skill, and then you can select how proficient in that skill you need them to be. So this organization is using a 1 to 5 scale to rate staff members, but you can use whatever size scale you like, 1 to 5, 1 to 10, 0 to 10, and so on. We'll say that we want someone who's at least level 4 in this skill. Now from here you can get more specific. So maybe you need someone who's got a combination of skills, or a skill in a particular interest, or they're located somewhere specific, or in a particular team or role. Whatever it might be, simply input all your criteria, then when you're ready, click find. And so very quickly, Skillspace will look through the entire organization to find people who exactly meet your needs, as well as people who come close. Okay, so now that we've gone through a couple of the reports in Skillspace, let's get stuck into the setup. So when you first join Skillspace, your organization's adventure will begin here, in the skills directory. This is where you'll input and organize your organization's skill library. So I can see that this organization here has two main groups of skills, manufacturing skills and software and digital skills. If I open up one of these categories here, I can see a number of subcategories and I can see skills denoted here by stars. If I want to add a new skill to a category, I simply click on the category I want to add it to, then click new skill. Now from here, I can add in whatever skill I like. Could be a soft skill, could be a technical skill. I'll just add in a test skill for now. And then I can give it a description as well if I like. And when I'm done, I click save. Okay, so now I've just added a new skill to this category. There it is there. And if I want, I can drag and drop it to a different skill category. And I can move entire categories around. So what I'm illustrating here is that adding skills one at a time in skill space is really straightforward. But it's worth noting that we can actually bulk import data for you if you like. So if you have your skill data ready to go, your people data, role data, team data, whatever it might be, we can give you some Excel spreadsheets to fill out. You fill them out, pass them back to us, we'll check the formatting, and then we can run the import for you. And that just means that you'll be able to get up and running quickly. Once you have your skills in the system, you then need to decide how you want to assign skills to your people. So in Skillsbase, there's a few different ways of doing that. You can assign skills to people one at a time, you can do it per team, or you can assign skills to people based on their job role. This is the most common approach that organizations take in Skillsbase. So here I am in the roles directory, and I can see the different job roles that the organization has. I can see developers, engineers, general managers, and so on. And if I click on edit on one of these roles, you can see that for my developers here, I've assigned them these skill categories here. So what that means is if I invite someone into the system and I assign them this role, they'll then be able to be assessed on the skills within these categories. Now we can actually get a bit more granular if we like. So if I click on show skills, here I have the option of assigning specific skills to this job role, as opposed to entire skill categories. Once I'm happy with the skill selection, I click save. And there we go, I've now associated skills with that role. Now, it's worth noting that in Skillspace, you can assign multiple roles to your staff members, and you can take things a step further by introducing skill targets. Now, a skill target is our way of saying how proficient at a particular skill we want our staff members to be. So for my developers here, 
I could say that I want all of my developers, for instance, to be a, a level 3 in this skill, or a level 5 in this skill, a level 4 in this skill, and so on. And so what that means is once your staff members log in and they complete their skill assessments, or have their skills assessed by a supervisor, you're then able to contrast where they're at against their targets. So in Alan's case here, I can see that he's got quite the significant skill gap for this skill here. But I can see over here that he's actually hit his target for the equipment maintenance skill. Okay. So, so far we've gotten skills into the system with associated skills with roles and with introduced skill targets. If we wanted to get our people up and running in the system, we could jump over to the people directory. So from here you can search for people, you can perform bulk edits, you can prompt people to log in and complete the skill assessments, and of course you can add people. Now in Skillspace you can add people in a few different ways. You can configure single sign-on if you have it, you can manually add people via an Excel spreadsheet or one at a time, and you can add people via email invitation. Once you get your staff members into the system, you're then able to have them conduct their skill assessments. So in Skillspace, there's two types of assessments. There are self-assessments, where staff members rate themselves, and there are supervisor assessments, where supervisors and managers rate the skills of staff. I'm going to now conduct a self-assessment. So this is where I'm rating my own skills. So you can see who I am. I'm John Administrator. You can see that my skills have been assigned to me via the General Manager role. And the first skill I'm going to rate myself on is this one here, this Java skill. So if I hover my mouse over this skill, I get to see the description associated with it, and then I can rate myself. So as mentioned, this organization is using a 1 to 5 scale to rate staff. You can use whatever size scale you like, of course. And here on the right hand side, you can see the description that this organization has provided each one of these ratings. Now some organizations will provide a broad description for skill ratings that applies to all skills, and other organizations will say what it means to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 for each particular skill. There's no right or wrong answer, there's only what works for you. So based on this organization's definition of what it means to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm going to rate myself a 4. And then I'll see that Skillsbase gives me the option to rate my interest level. So this is an optional feature in Skillsbase, you don't have to make use of it, but it's something we recommend because if you understand how passionate your staff members are in their skills, that can be useful when it comes time to assigning workplace opportunities to your staff. So I'm pretty passionate about this skill, so I'm going to rate myself a 5. And that's it. You just go through one skill at a time providing your ratings, and then when you finish, all of this information for John will have been updated from the staff member's self-assessment perspective. And then of course, there are supervisor assessments. So here on the Assess People page, you can see all of your staff members. You can see where they're at from a self-assessment and a supervisor assessment. So it looks like Don is overdue for a supervisor assessment, so let's do that now. Okay, so as you can see, the supervisor assessment looks pretty similar to the self-assessment. The one notable difference is this black arrow here. So this arrow indicates where a staff member has rated themselves. So in Don's case, I can see that Don has rated himself a 1 for this skill. Now, I might disagree with Don, might think that, well, by our definition, Don, you're not a 1, you're a 2. And I could explain why I have that belief down below. And for this skill, I might say that Don, again, I don't think you're a 5, I think you're a 4, and again, I could explain why. And so when you finish the skill assessment for Don, all of Don's information will have updated from the supervisor's perspective. And so once you've completed all of your assessments, you end up with this page here. So on this page, you can see all of the skills assigned to a staff member, so assigned to Don. You can see the target per skill, so this skill has a target of 4. You can see the self-assessment information, so this skill with its target of 4 has a rating of 1 which means we're 25% of the way towards hitting our target from a self-assessment perspective. And then there's the interest rating of 3. And then we've got supervisor ratings, and we've got the average ratings as well. So a nice little hidden feature on this page is the ability to tweak skills one at a time. So if I was Don's supervisor, I could hover my mouse over the rating that I've given him here as his supervisor, and then I could tweak it to whatever I like. So I think that Don's improved in this skill by a little bit, so I'm going to make it a 4. And then when I refresh the page, there we go, the skill's been updated. So it just means that if you're looking to update skills one at a time, you don't need to do full skill assessments in order to do that. Okay, 
So in addition to tracking skills and interests, Skillspace can also keep tabs on what qualifications your staff members have. So here in the qualifications directory, I can see all of the different people who have qualifications. And if I click into Hazel's profile, and I click on qualifications, I can see that Hazel has a computer science degree and she is a certified project manager. And I can see information like status, start date, end date. The end date field can be used to remind staff members of when a qualification or a certification is meant to expire. So when that date comes up, Skillspace will just be able to email your staff members with that expiration date, just reminding them to get it renewed when they can. You can also add custom fields here. So you might want to add an additional text field or an attachment field so that staff members can upload proof for their qualifications. So let's look at some of the other reporting capabilities that we have. So on the trends page, you can see how your staff members have improved over time. Here on Hazel's page, I can see that she's actually gotten a fair bit better since we started with her in this backend languages skill category. And that's fantastic news, right? It means that whatever training we're providing Hazel or whatever self-development she's undergoing, it's clearly working for her. Then on the assessments page, you can get a PDF export of all of your previous assessments. So let's open one of Hazel's previous supervisor assessments. So here on this page, I can see Hazel as part of the software team. I can see that this supervisor assessment for her was completed by John Administrator. And I can see all of the ratings that we've provided her and any comments. Okay, now let's have a look at the training module. So the training module in Skillspace is a way that we can help your staff members close those skill gaps that we've identified. The way it works is if you have any training material online anywhere, so it could be a YouTube video, a Google document, a LMS module, we can get the URL of that training material, give it a name, and then assign that training material to a specific skill and skill level. And so what that means is when your staff members log in and they complete their skill assessments, anytime that a staff member identifies that they have a skill gap, such as like I have here in this Java skill, Skillspace will automatically assign that staff member the appropriate training for them. And so then they can click on that start course button and go complete the training. And so what you end up with is everyone in your organization having their own personalized, always up to date training recommendation list. And that so far has been a pretty powerful feature for our users who are looking to speed up the time it takes to upskill their staff members. Okay, now let's have a look at the careers module, another one of the newer and pretty exciting features that Skillspace has launched. Okay, so here I am on Alan's page and I'm looking at the career insights module. So on this page, you can see not only how your staff members are going against the role they've currently been assigned, but in fact against every role and every team that's been assigned skills in the entire organization. So if I look here, I can see that Alan is an engineer. That's what that little tick there means. And I can see that naturally he has 12 out of the 12 skills required to be an engineer. And I can see that he's 94% of the way towards hitting the targets required of him in that role. But if I look down, I can see that for the general manager role, for example, Alan has only got 12 out of the 25 skills required for that role. And I can see that he's only 48% of the way towards hitting the targets for that role. And then on the right hand side over here, I can see additional information regarding how he's traveling against any of the particular roles or teams that we're looking at. And I can also see in this right hand column options to assign Alan additional training on top of what he's already been assigned to his training module. So if Alan wanted to upskill in a skill level that wasn't required of him given his current role, or even upskill in a skill that wasn't already assigned to him, he would come here, he would click on the related training option, click on the plus button, and that would then assign that training material to his training module. And so between the training module and the career insights module, what we're empowering staff members to do at Skillspace is really take their career progression into their own hands. Okay, so now that we've looked at a number of the different reporting options for individuals, Let's look at some of the larger reporting tools. So first thing I'd like to look at is the capability matrix. Now the capability matrix is a fantastic tool for helping you understand the depth of talent at your workplace. So here I'm gonna look at my engineers. I can tell you that for instance, there are 11 engineers who have this particular skill, but only one of those 11 engineers has a rating of five out of five for that skill. Now, if that skill was crucial to my organization's success, I might want to respond to that insight by training up some of the lower rated staff members or by going out to the marketplace and explicitly hiring someone who was really good in that skill. Okay, so that was the capability matrix. Now let's have a look at the report builder. 
The Report Builder is a really flexible tool for creating table-based reports. Again, let's look at our engineers here. And then I just drag and drop whatever fields I want to report on. So Skillspace has already suggested some, and I'm going to add in a couple. And then when I'm ready, I click Run Report. And now Skillspace has created for me a custom report with descriptive information here on the left and numerical information here on the right. Okay, so now let's look at one last report. And this report is useful for understanding where your skill gaps are as an organization. So you can run this report for your entire organization or for specific groups of staff members. So I'm gonna click into my senior developers here today and I click on analysis. I get this really pretty bubble graph up top and I get this skill table down below. So on this table, I can see all of the skills assigned to this particular group of staff members, in my case, my senior developers. I can see how many of this group of staff members have a target for this skill. I can see what is the average skill level for this skill. I can see how close on average they are towards hitting their target for this skill, looks like 89% on average. And I can see how many members of this group of staff members have actually hit their target. So it looks like three out of six or 50%. And then that same information is actually shown again above graphically. You can hover your mouse over the question mark there to get an understanding of what the different colors and positions mean. And so in a nutshell, that is Skillspace.